Fortunately, I am joined by someone who knows about all of this. Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist and a planetary scientist and the author of the new book, Welcome to the Universe in 3D, a visual tour. Okay, Neil, first of all, I've got to tell you, I'm a big fan. I'm so excited uh, to have you here tonight. First thing I want to ask you in terms of trying to send messages to these aliens, can you explain why they chose to, or why they want to beam these messages uh, to the Milky Way in particular? Well, the Milky Way is our own home galaxy. And so a signal would reach stars way sooner than if we tried to send it outside of our galaxy to other star systems. So uh, what do I mean by way sooner? It would get there in thousands of years or tens of thousands of years rather than millions of years. So, so yeah, I, I don't wait around for a reply anytime soon. These signals are moving at the speed of light. So, <laughs> but of course that's a different question for whether we should do that at all. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask you, Neil. It kind of freaks me out. I mean, we if there are aliens, and it seems like there's all of this new evidence that there are, that they exist out there, would we really want to send that kind of information? I mean, how to get to Earth, would we want to send that out there into the universe? Well, just to be clear, it's not evidence for aliens that is being presented. It's evidence for things that people can't explain. And just because you can't explain it, that is not equal to the statement that therefore they must be aliens. Uh, so th they can't be explained. The universe brims with mysteries. So we should investigate it further. I have no hesitation about that. But <clears throat> I can tell you that uh, anyone who's worked for the government knows how profoundly incompetent the government is. So it's easier for me to believe that we've actually been visited by aliens than we've been visited by aliens and the government has managed to keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> locked yeah. up reports. That, so, that's a good point, Neil. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. They would I'm have just a hard saying. time keeping that under wraps, I think. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's even, a good point. Think, think of the janitor at Area 51, right? Who sees the, the dragon, right. the alien corpse. Right. They'll just take a video, a picture of it. They'll, the janitor will lose his job overnight, but it'll be the most famous, richest janitor there ever was <laughs> upon hitting uh, yeah, the images. You would, think it, the you would think it would have leaked out at this point, Neil. And, and the interesting thing that I think about is in all these movies that we see, and you made a good point. I said aliens, but really it's just the UFOs that we sort of know exist out there and it's unidentified and we're not sure what they are. There's no evidence specifically of aliens, but in the movies at least, they always seem <laughs> to make them seem much more intelligent than us. I mean, is it possible that they could be out there and actually were the smarter ones? So, if they have spaceships coming to Earth, we are not the smarter ones, <laughs> I can tell you that. You know, we haven't left low Earth orbit since 1972. So, we're, no, if they've got technology to reach us, um, they, they're in charge. But just to be clear, um, if you worry about sending signals out there with our home address, I understand and I feel for that because you don't give your email address to a stranger in the street who's your same species, right? So I, I understand <laughs> the resistance, but here's the difference. This, it's too late. We've been sending TV signals out inadvertently ever since the dawn of television. And so the radio, it's called the radio bubble. And it is this bubble of radio waves moving at the speed of light that has been doing it since the 1930s, 1940s. And so aliens, out to 80 light years, if they're there, they already know all about us from our TV. And I don't know how accurate it would be. <laughs> it's just our TV signals, but this is what they'd be basing their understanding of human life on. And it seems to me, based on that evidence, they would surely conclude there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. It's interesting when you think about how even five or ten years ago, when you had this conversation about UFOs, you were sort of immediately thought of as sort of a crazy person, and it was a real conspiracy theory. And now it's really become a legitimate conversation. I mean, since the government has released some of these documents, we know there was a significant study, a legitimate study that happened for a long time. Uh, it's sort of interesting how the conversation has evolved, and now you can actually talk about it, and people don't think you're totally nuts. Well, <clears throat> that's partly true. There was Project Blue Book out of the 1960s and 70s that was finally released. That was an official government study of objects in the sky. 
And that was kind of useful because if the Russians, remember that was the Cold War, if the Russians were developing some kind of new device, you'd want people looking up and reporting them. So there was a, a, a way to report the unidentified or weird objects that you cited. Back then, I, it wasn't so crazy to have done so. Um, but you're right, if you have headlines now in the New York Times discussing this, so it has reached a new kind of era, for sure. But my rebuttal here is, if there's an alien invasion, it would be crowdsourced by the three billion cell phones that are currently active on this planet, which take high resolution right. images and video. We would know it. And how many people are looking out their window at airplanes? Anything that comes by, a, a Google map of your town. If the spaceship were coming in, we'd have so many ways of seeing it. Way better than the military can. Because we're watching the whole Earth with high resolution images in ways that they can't. So I, I'm still waiting for that video of the alien walking off the flying saucer coming up to greet the person <laughs> who's about to be abducted. You can live stream that, and that would go viral overnight. We have cat videos going viral overnight. If you get an alien, oh my gosh, that, that'll, that's a game changer. Yeah, you would, think, <laughs> you would think with phones today, everybody has a camera. Yeah, we would have seen something. But Neil, do you think um, like the world is really actually ready to know for sure whether or not there's UFOs or aliens? I mean, could people really handle it? I think, would it just freak people out too much? Do you think that's why it's possible that the government has hid it from us? Well, part of the worry, okay, so two, two points. So if, the, if we send out our return address, there's worry, uh, Stephen Hawking worried about this, others, the uh, Institute for Future Earth or something at Oxford worries about this, that they might come and destroy us. But think that through for a moment. So that fear is, it's a fear of what aliens might do with a higher technology than we have, but what's that based on? And I think I know. It's based on what our actual knowledge is of what we do to each other. The entire history of high technology civilizations encountering lower technology civilizations has never boded well for the lower technology civilization. So I think we are implanting our cultural societal fears on this mysterious thing out there for which there is no evidence. Yeah, and I think we base a lot of it on the movies, and we've sort of just created our own view of what it might be like. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, it was so uh, nice talking to you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Happy, happy to be on. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.